In an atmosphere this hostile and paranoid, guns pointed at police became the norm. You know, at some point you have to draw a line in the sand as you know, this is, I guess this is it. They're armed. Um, they have an agenda and they're committed. Um, they're committed to whatever they believe in and there's no backing down. When you got a group of people and then, you know, again, one or two of them would never probably have done what they did, pointed weapons at us. But when you got three or four hundred and you can be anonymous in a crowd, it's easy to just get caught up in that. We were, we're talking about cattle, not human beings. Oh, we know. Joe Lombardo you know, confirms that Metro that developed a lot of intelligence like about militia members who were present. Those who aimed their guns at officers will be dealt with, he says. Yes, there's going to be consequences. There, definitely, I mean, that's, that's unacceptable behavior. Uh, if we let it go, it would continue into the future. George Knapp, 8 News Now. Law enforcement sources told us that federal officials are preparing to move against Clive and Bundy, but that they might wait months until things die down before making their move. Metro police could take separate action in response to the provocations they experienced in Bunkerville and may be working to identify particular suspects. A dramatic development in the saga surrounding rancher Cliven Bundy, the FBI is on the case now. The 8 News Now I team has learned that FBI agents have started an investigation into the events surrounding a showdown that could have easily turned bloody one month ago. Chief I team reporter George Knapp is here with that exclusive story, George. Yeah, it's one thing for uh, Cliven Bundy and his supporters to square off against uh, an assortment of BLM employees. It's quite another when the FBI enters the picture, and that's exactly what has happened. The I team has confirmed that FBI agents have launched a formal investigation into alleged death threats, intimidation, and possible weapons violations that culminated with a dangerous showdown on April 12th. And the first people to be interviewed by FBI agents are Metro Police, starting with the sheriff. As viewers will recall, federal employees suspended their roundup of Clive and Bundy's cattle following a confrontation outside the BLM compound near Bunkerville. At the urging of Metro, Bundy's cattle were released, but BLM's new director announced the matter wasn't over and would be resolved one way or another. We now know what that means. That's probably the scariest time in my life. Last week, we heard from Metro officers who intervened to protect the lives of federal employees from the 400 or so Bundy supporters and armed militia members. Officers told us they feared for their lives that day because of the assembled firepower and because many in the crowd had pointed weapons at officers, taunted them, told them they should be ready to die. We were, we're talking about cattle, not human beings. Assistant Sheriff Joe Lombardo, who was left in charge of the Metro contingent by Sheriff Doug Gillespie told us such alleged behavior would be the subject of a criminal investigation. The federal authorities are conducting an investigation and I'm pretty confident that it's going to continue into the future. Would there be consequences for somebody who's there on videotape on, on a news camera pointing a gun at a Metro officer or pointing a gun at a federal ranger? Yes, there's going to be consequences. The, Definitely, I mean, that's, that's unacceptable behavior. Uh, if we let it go, uh, it would continue into the future. The I-team has learned that Lombardo was interviewed by FBI agents earlier this week. The first person to be questioned by the FBI team was Lombardo's boss, Sheriff Gillespie. The sheriff confirmed to us he was asked about what he saw the day of the showdown, whether guns were pointed at Metro officers. He declined to tell us what he said to the agents. FBI agents also spoke to an entire squad of Metro officers who were on the scene to act as a buffer between the crowd and the BLM. Bundy supporters have insisted in emails and calls to 8 News Now that no one in the crowd pointed weapons at BLM or Metro, but officers told us that's exactly what they saw, that many with guns set up behind women and children. Oh, it's not a rumor because when we first got out there, that's who we, when we pulled up and, 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 and made the left there to, to divide uh, the I-15 north and south is where we were set up. Um, that's all you saw. You saw the kids and you saw the women and then you see, you can see the horses off, you know, in the backdrop. And then you see the men with guns everywhere. They're laying on the ground, they're in the back of pickup trucks. And you're going, wow, this would never happen down in Las Vegas. But it was there, 
That's not a rumor. Uh, that was reality. Uh, and I saw that with my own eyes, no doubt. Sergeant Jenkins has been interviewed by the FBI already. A second squad is expected to be interviewed by week's end. The Bureau does not confirm or deny the existence of any investigation, but we have confirmed from multiple sources that a criminal probe is underway. It is illegal to point loaded weapons at federal agents, and we don't have to tell you what would happen if a suspect pointed a gun at a Metro officer here in the Valley. Clive and Bundy supporters have been adamant in saying to us that no weapons were aimed at the feds or at police, that the BLM Rangers were the ones pointing guns. From the sound of things, they'll be given a chance to prove those allegations because the FBI mm. is coming their way, and this could stretch on for many months. Probably the truth in the middle somewhere. As somewhere, it usually is. yep, yeah. sure. Thanks, George.